Taylor and I teach 7th and 8th grade math at Sunnybrae Middle School in Arcata. We're so excited that you guys have tuned in, either on YouTube or actually the television, both. Yes. And so before we start, we're going to be presenting you with My Family, My Flavors contest. It's pretty exciting. So do you have a favorite traditional family food? He wants you to tell everybody about it. Enter the My Family, My Flavors recipe contest. Three winners will be chosen to cook their dish on TV and win a $100 grocery store gift card. My Family, My Flavors is open to students between the ages of 14 and 24. If you are under 18, you will need your parent or guardian's permission. Deadline to enter is November 4th, which is this Monday, coming up. For rules, details, and entry form, go to keet.org. <laughs> we're very enamored with that thing. That is so cool. Uh, we were the first. So it is. It is Amy's first time this this fifteenth season. Yes, She's I was saying it's exciting. my seventeenth year of teaching, my fifteenth year on this show, and it just goes by so fast because it's so exciting. Math and science, and Pam and I have been together the whole fifteen years, and um, we just love being on the show. And I coach cross country in the fall, and that happens to be Tuesday, Thursday. So I'm super excited to be back the rest of the year um, and answer any of your science and math questions. They interact together and I and I always say cons you can just call and say I don't understand solving equations or something like that um, same with science or you can pick a specific problem but we and have a new way this year that is a new <laughs> way exactly so if you guys see there's not a telephone number like there has been in the past but there's homeworkhotline.tv so if you go on YouTube and you type that in you'll get there and you'll be able to follow along and you'll actually be typing, you'll be kind of like texting us. Yeah, you'll type the question, but we'll still be able to talk to you and teach on the whiteboard or talk to you, but um, you'll be typing the questions instead of and typing the responses real time. So you can do it real yeah. time. So we can it's, still it's interact awesome. just through typing and us talking. Yes. Cool. Very good. We New have this year. Yes, yes. It's very cool. Um, we have a guest this uh, this show, and you can see him. He's sitting in between the two of us. His name, we're calling him Mr. Bones. You can purchase a Mr. Bones at Costco if you care to. But it's a pretty cool um, item, and it's a great way to show you bones. How important are bones to people? I mean, they're pretty important. <laughs> if you break one, you certainly know it. And um, without them, you wouldn't be moving. You wouldn't have calcium or phosphorus. You wouldn't have blood cells. I mean, you wouldn't There's be so human. Much, yeah, you exactly. wouldn't be able to be alive. So yeah, there is so much. So because we're vertebrates, we're vertebrates. We need that's these. right. <laughs> we do. We're not invertebrates. So most invertebrates have an an exoskeleton mm -hmm. on the outside, but we yes. have an endoskeleton, which is on the inside. Yes. Yes. So they're showing the spine right now, which is a really important part. It helps to keep us upright. Yes. Yes. Um, so how many bones, I'll have you guess, Amy, how many bones do you think an adult human has? I know, whatever, just do a round, who cares, It'd be close. 82. 82, all right, good <laughs> guess, it's 206. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all good. Um, so yeah, 206 is a lot, but a baby is born with 270. Oh, because they fuse. Yes. That word fuse. That's why they can like move around. <laughs> you yeah. like babies. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and the, the top of their skull, it has this thing called a fontanelle, which is this opening that ends up closing. Yeah. yeah. We have to be so, super careful. Super careful. Yeah. yeah. So um, bones are uh, super important because we couldn't move without them because something is attached to the bones, Amy. What is attached to the bones to help us move? Muscles. Muscles. And there's, there are these um, type of connective tissue that holds together bone to bone. So the shoulder and this um, scapula here, which is the back of, it's like your, your blade, yeah. your, your shoulder blade. Yeah. Is that what you call it, your shoulder yeah. blade? I can remember, can't think of the, the um, common term for yeah. it, but yeah, there you go. Um, and so it holds this together. And also there's connective tissue that holds the muscle to the bone. So it's called the sinews and the tendons and the stuff? The tendons, you got it. Tendons for that. And then, um, so a tendon, can you think of like the Achilles tendon? That's yeah. the longest one. So on the back of your heel, if you guys feel on the back of your, like where your heel goes up to your, sh your uh, calf, yeah. you can feel this sort of hard thing. That, that is your Achilles and it goes pretty far. That's really important or you couldn't walk. And then, and then uh, ligaments, um, there's a student at Fortuna High, bless her heart, she's awesome. She broke her ACL, which is oh, her anterior geez. cruciate ligament. So if we're looking at Mr. Bones here, it's what helps to stabilize your knee. 
And uh, that can break if you accidentally, it's a nice picture of the knee, <laughs> looks very chunky. But if you go sideways yeah, with it or whatever. it's a big injury in like football and basketball, professional, yeah, they get overused. Oh, we have a question actually. Oh, oh that's so cool. It says, <clears throat> Charlotte Hart, what is the strongest bone in the body? Nice, the strongest. Um, I, I, can, I can tell you the biggest, the strongest though, they're all kind of made out of the same uh, material. So I would, I would say the longest or the largest is the femur, which is sort of folded up on this guy. The strongest though, it's more like muscles are the strongest. Yeah, but I mean around your pelvis because your whole body sits on it, does that do anything? Um, you know, like it's whole it's strong for sure, but it, uh, to say the, but the bone itself is stronger than the other So they're not really strong bones, because they all made of the same. Yeah, so I mean I'd actually say maybe the femur because it's, it's not only just like the other bones made uh, with the hard outer part and the bone marrow in the middle, but it's also the biggest, so strongest that might fit for that. Well, and as, also as you like lift weights and stuff and make more muscle, you're strengthening around the bone, yeah. so then you would get stronger, but the bone would stay the same. Yeah, but the you'd kind of make, but you'd have that stuff around it to make it more yes. less likely to maybe break because it has stronger muscles and tendons are stronger. And right, and maybe. cartilage too, which is the the thing that is uh, I found at joints, uh, which uh, kind of helps to cushion the mm -hmm. bone to bone thing. Um, that is fed when you do exercise. That does get kind of stronger and yeah. and more healthy. I've had just like injury, just kind of like with my ankle, and then they say things like get your hips better, stronger to, and then you know get those bigger stronger then that helps your knees helps it's like all everything ties together, ties together and the way, right. way that all works is yeah is the stronger you can get on all your little muscles and tendons and things it's going to just make you be stronger yes which absolutely. protects your bones a right. little more definitely <laughs> and if you think about your head we take mr bones's hat off on thursday we're going to have some students talking oh there's a nice picture of the femur there and look at that ball that is a joint known as the ball and socket because the the ball the, the circular part of the bone that they're pointing to at the top there fits into a place on the pelvis so like a ball and a socket you have that on your shoulders you too. do yeah. that's right so your shoulders and your and hips and your hips yeah that's a ball and socket. that's why you joint. can move them around so differently mm -hmm. than the rest of your body yeah circles very neat well we're gonna have three people coming from the anatomy class at Fortuna High on Thursday to talk about all the bones in the skull because you'd be amazed that there's the cranial and the facial and there's there's um, eight bones here and there's 14 bones on your face that Jeez. I know what the heck the biggest one is this your mandible if you open Mr. Bones' mouth there you go here's surprise Just different than yeah. snakes no yeah. like we can actually I know open our mouths Right, and we can't, we can't, oh, well, snakes can open their mouths. Not like this, though. They don't detach. They get stuck, right? Because that's why they, anyway, we can talk about it. Okay, good. Thursday. Snakes. We're also going to have snakes on Thursday. <laughs> Thursday Very snakes. cool. Oh, there's a great picture right here of some of the bones that they're going to be talking about, that green one. Uh, that's super important for protecting your brain, uh, the whole, you know, the main part of your brain. And then this is the front, the front part of your brain is the one that's orange. And then the back part where you have your sight is actually located in the back part of your brain. Um, that's uh, also protected by a part of your skull. So all of it needs to be protected. Yes. Yeah. That's why you wear a helmet when you bike and skateboard and yes. skate and, and all that and because play games that were yeah. soccer. Yes. Not soccer. Wait, Football. you don't wear a helmet. <laughs> That'd be crazy. But, but uh, you're right. You enough. don't wear a helmet, but you can get hit. I'm sorry. That was what I was thinking. You can get hit yeah. when you're playing either basketball or yeah, you just have to be careful. Soccer. And they do a lot of concussion protocol now. Like if I, you ever coach, you have to do way more extensive concussion protocol. Yes, and that's really good. And if someone's not sure in the past, you're just like, go back in the game. Now it's like, nope, you're missing this game. Get a doctor's note. They're pe being a lot more careful because that's where your brain is. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. And even something as simple as heading the ball, that can, depending yeah, that's on how why hard you do it. Little kids are not... They, and I grew up, everyone had, and now, like little kids, you don't head for soccer, you don't head the ball anymore because. For good reason. You just have to protect our brain, but I because, think people yeah. know so much more now. They do. Than in the 80s. Even <laughs> though this is really strong, if you head it, your your brain is sort of in this cushiony, like yeah. fluid, and it, it sort of bangs around a little bit, and it's basically like scrambled, like mushy scrambled eggs in there, so it, it's it's not good for it. That is a good picture. I have a math question. Hey, that's great. Let's From go. Caitlin Taylor, and thank you for calling. And she wants the difference. So PEMDAS is kind of that older fashion thing. And so we've, I've shifted to Gemma. 
And I was just, I, she wants to know the difference. And so as we transition, cool. I mean, PEMDAS has been around forever, but what you come to find out is that kids start to make more mistakes with PEMDAS. And I just do the same up here, right? <laughs> so PEMDAS <clears throat> is parentheses for the P. So we have parentheses. And then I'll put this up above. So we have exponents. And then we kind of have this multiply divide. And then we go left to right. And then we have this add subtract. And we go left to right. I'm trying to write kind of fast. Left to right. What happens, what I've realized with time, is people see that M. And multiply divide are in that same layer. When you multiply by a fraction, so if you have like 6 times 1 half, that's 3. And that's the same as division. 6 divided by 2 is 3. It's the same. So they're both multiplication. And we kind of need to move through it left to right so we're not looping in the wrong thing. But when people see that multiple, multiply first and then divide, what they'll do is they'll multiply even if divide is first. So I've seen it where if you have like 8 divided by 2 times 4, what they'll do is they'll go 2 times 4 is 8, 8 divided by 8 is 1. But it's supposed to be 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. The division is always on the bottom, so what you're really doing is you're dividing by that 2. So you could do 32 divided by 2 is 16, but you need that on the bottom, and that's why we say to go left to right. But kids, when they see that multiply first, they, don't, they just do it and they don't really understand it, and the same with the add subtract. The other issue with it is P is for parentheses, and so with parentheses, what if you have um, other, what we call grouping symbols, what if you, so if you have a parentheses, what if you have a bracket? What if you have a fraction bar? What if you have a square root? What if you have an absolute value? Those are all grouping symbols, but we don't have that, in, we only have this. We don't have anything else. So what we've been trying to do, I would say I heard it from Tammy Masamoto at C, she teaches at CR, she's amazing. But I think I heard it from her, first of all, we say Gemma. So then what we get for our order of operations is we get grouping symbol first. So that includes all those things I just said, bracket, fraction bar, absolute value, square root. So we do any grouping symbol, then we do exponents. And then, like I just said, multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing. So we just have this pool of multiply divide, or we have this pool of multiplying by fractions. As long as that divide stuff is on the bottom, we really just need to go left to right and make sure that all the multiply stuff would be like on the top of a fraction, all the divide stuff on the bottom. So we do it one packet. It's still kind of multiply divide left to right, but really, we can think of dividing as multiplying by fractions. And then the A is still our add subtract left to right, but we can kind of just think of like combining like terms. Combining like terms would be like if you had a positive 5, a negative 3, a positive 7, and then a negative 1. We don't need to necessarily go left to right. We can go a positive 5 plus a negative 3 plus a 7 plus a negative 1. Now they're all adding. Now we just have an A, and we just combine like terms. I owe $3, I owe one more dollar, I owe $4. I have $5, I have $7, I have $12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So we start to learn that we're just adding, we're just combining like terms. So then we kind of condense this just to, you're just adding. <laughs> You're just multiplying. And just make sure that you're doing it with the right things, that divide is on the bottom, multiply is on the top of a fraction, that adding, you're adding negatives, you're combining like terms. So there's Gemma. It just kind of cinches it up and kind of makes you overall understand it better, and it's more inclusive and creates less mistakes. So Thanks, Caitlin. That's why I do Gemma. And also when you're solving equations, I do Gemma backwards. You remove. So you can remove that add, then the mm -hmm. multiply divide, then that. Mm -hmm. 
So Jimma backwards is for solving equations. Thanks, Caitlin, for calling. Yeah, yeah. I'm Thank sure people so wonder about that, like, why are we using this now? <laughs> right. Anyway. Well, you it's improved, right? So yeah, that's a, that's and you want to try thing. to like not have it be everything you memorize and try to really understand the concept. And I think mm -hmm. the more you take out each of these different things, the easier it is to start understanding the concept and not just going through those steps in those six right in that order. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> a great thing, though, and that's the, the beauty of the the math that we're teaching now. Yeah. Rather than common and, core. And yeah. Common core. Yeah. It's awesome. harder, but it, you do actually understand, and it's more applying to science and real life. And so although it's harder, um, the, we grow our brain. That's what we're learning about, that growth mindset. And we can grow our brain by thinking and trying. And the more we can do bigger problems and use science and engineering um, to mix it all in and statistics and all this cool stuff that's coming out, the better. There's a the brain. Yay. Brain our brain. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, it, it's, it is Excellent. harder, but it's better for us. Yes, <laughs> yes. Harder, but better. It's true. I mean, some of the best things come from the most effort that you put in. Exactly. So. Perseverance. Mm -hmm. That's what we talk about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, also back to grit. <laughs> um, it's all right. So that was that was very helpful. Yeah. Back to the sk Mr. Back Bones. To, oh, Mr. Bones. <laughs> all right. So we talked about uh, the brain, and we talked about the, the skull and how cool it is. Uh, but <clears throat> also, let's let's take a look at some other joints because joints are kind of a cool thing. Yes. Uh, this is a place where bones meet. Um, so I'll, I'll if you take your arm and hold it out straight. Hold your arm out straight. Okay, now bring your hand in towards your face. This is called flexion. And then if you put it back out, that's extension. Okay. So to flex and extend. <laughs> this kind of joint, which is all along one plane, flex and extend, is called a hinge joint, like a okay. door hinge. So there you go. And so let's look at all the hinge joints this guy has. He's got them. Um, the elbow. Yep, the elbow. But then this sure. is different for the shoulder. That's right. That's a ball and socket. What did you say? Call it? Yeah, ball and socket. Yeah, yeah. And then we have the hips are ball and socket. Ball and socket. There's one more joint that's big. Oh, time wrist. Oh, well, no, that's no, not. no, it's okay. The wrist is complicated, but let's look. See, it can hinge, so you can flex the, your hand and you can extend your hand. But the other thing you can do is you can do Ooh, this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so this kind of joint is called condyloid. It's a <laughs> weird word, but all it means is that you can do all these things. You can rotate. You can make it flex, flex and extend. And rotate. Flex okay. and rotate. So yeah. your knees are going to yes. be another. Yep, that's it. Your knees. And then your ankle is going to be that. That condyloid one, condyloid. yeah. And then look at what you're cool, so cool that your head can do on your neck is you can right, left, right, left. So you can do that. And then you can also chin down, that hurts head to up. Go back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of need some massaging back there. So back and forth. So actually, flex your head now, Amy. Flex it. Down. Yes. Extend. Okay, so there's two bones that take care of that. It's the very two top bones, and I don't know if on Mr. Bones we can show you, because they didn't really distinguish them, because who cares, this is a Halloween decoration. <laughs> but the top bone is called the atlas, and that's the bone that allows you to go like this, okay. pivot, and then this, like that, is the axis. And that's, wait, I think it's the axis that allows you to do this, and the atlas allows you to do this. W anyway, there are these two bones acting in um, tandem, and they allow you to do both those movements. Isn't that where the new bone is coming out in babies? Like, there's the ba babies are being born with an extra bone because of how we look forward, so they're be being born with an extra bone in the bottom of their necks. Wait, what? Okay, so that sounds a little like, I don't know if that would work in terms of evolution. But yeah, because basically the, the, the parents are looking down so much onto computers. I understand, but then your parents would have to put that in its, their genes. They're being kids are. You can look it up. Kids are being born with an I extra. I want to look this up. Yeah, because that yeah sounds kids are being born. More kids and more kids are being born with an extra bone, so that it doesn't hurt them as much to work on computers, look at tablets, draw. You know, we we do so much of that in our lives. Sure. In the last what? But I mean, 30 that's years. like okay. But here's the my only argument okay. with that would be okay. So let's say your parents uh, were worked out. They worked out big time. Since the eight. Forever. I mean, say yeah. they worked out for yeah. their their life, then they have you, and then you're a stronger baby. That doesn't work. That you can't can happen. look it up. I'm happening. looking it up. It's I'm happening. sorry. It's happening. To, okay. It's happening. Okay. Yeah, it's happening. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. Yes. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, just in terms of uh, normally natural selection, selects for those traits that are the best. So. If those babies that were born with that extra thing were able to pr produce more babies, then that would be a thing yeah. that would select for. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. Yes. So no. So very few. 
and now more are. So it's generational. It's been in, gener yeah, it's generational and more are now, but you can look it up. Okay. We can come back to it on Thursday. Okay, good. We're coming back to it on Thursday. That's <laughs> awesome. So I don't want to go any further into that. Oh, very good. Okay, so now let's see. We had condyloid. Oh, how about we name some bones, all right? So okay. Amy, go ahead and, and name the bones that you, tibia you, that you know. Tibia and fibia. Okay, can you point to those? Tibia, tibia and fibula and fibula. are in your here, okay. these ones. Okay, right? so it's it, you're close. The, this is the radius and the ulna. Oh, radius ulna. so tibia. now so we oh, know legs. that's radius. That's right. So these your tibia, tibia, is that your fibia. is that your shin or your teeny one? Is the tibia the big I one or the little like one? I know, that's why. <laughs> thank you. Fib you're, yes, the little you're being one. Good. Yes, fibula. And tibia, fibula. Fibula. Fibula and the tibia. Tibia yeah, is the big one. That is right. Have that's you how you get shin yeah. splints uh, when I did like triple jump in 800 in oh, high so school. Oh, so painful. They just, because your muscle separates a little bit from your bone. Yeah, it's very yeah. painful. <laughs> it's so painful. And it makes like it really hard it to run, doesn't it? Oh my, yes. That helped, I remember. Yeah, that, that's a good oh, thing. Oh, Caitlin said that you have nice earrings. You're oh, cute. thank you very much, <laughs> Caitlin. You're, uh, I pull them out every Halloween. <laughs> yeah. They are They're cool, they match cool. Mr. Bones. That's awesome, thank you very much. <laughs> Since we get oh, yeah. There he is. Back. There we go. Yeah. Oh, look, he's, he's. We'll put his hand back on him. And uh, then. Um, and then, okay. How about this? Okay, so there's carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges, and there's tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. Do you want to guess which one's which? Tarsals are your hand ones, and metatarsals are your fingers. Uh, phalanges are your fingers and your toes. Phalanges are your okay, fingers and your, and your toes. Aren't and they in your hand? There's carpals. Carpal, Carpal tunnel syndrome. Oh yeah. Okay, Carpal. that's oh, all right. Gosh. Cool. No, I'm sorry. I'm no, I shouldn't. <laughs> no, I you like shouldn't should necessarily. Know. There's things you could ask me about math. I'd be like, oh, I don't remember. I could not tell you what Gemma meant for the life of me. So don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. So carpals are your hands. Carpals. So so all the bit bones, the bones that are in your wrist. So when you overuse this bone by doing repetitive. What are your motion, hand ones? That's carpal. Uh, metacarpals. 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 So carpals. Yeah, there metacarpals, you Metacarpals. Yes, and, and then. And then your fingers are phalanges. phalanges. Oh, let's talk about joints. What <laughs> what joint is this? Flex, is that the flexing? Yeah, flex extend, flex extend. I don't remember what we called this. Oh yeah, what did we, I do remember. What did we call this? I thought you just Same said. as a door. <laughs> hinge. Yes, hinge. And that these are hinge. 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 And, cause, okay, this <laughs> is cool. Wait, I'm trying to think, let's see. So the radius and the ulna, and this is a cool thing that you can radius do. Radius here, and this is ulna. Yeah, the radius. So ulna, elbow, ulna. Elbow, okay. ulna. So that's your ulna. Feel it all the way up to there. And then if you put your hand out so it's like this, and then you turn it over so your palm is up. I think that's like plantar. I can't remember exactly, but it doesn't matter. Um, so your bone is actually flipping over. I wish I could do it with him, but the <laughs> radius is. So feel the radius now. OK. It's going over to here. here. Yeah. But then and then do, do this, this and then it goes and then it's it's not crossing. It's crossing yeah. here over your ulna. And then it does it. Yeah. That's it's amazing <laughs> how our bodies work and yeah, it's incredible. That is exciting. I know. Well and everything works together, like I said, how they had me. I would have never thought to work out my hips to help either my knees or my ankle. I'd, but it all just ties together. Yes. And so you just have to be aware of those kinds of things. Just right. with injuries a lot of times. Oh, I know. Or like you're saying how the muscle that connects like your Achilles to your calf. Like mm -hmm. sometimes when you stretch, you feel it all the way up because everything's all connected and yeah. your brain thinks it's all separate. Right. But um, yeah. they because they're all tied to these different spots on the bones, right? They yep. have to connect into the bones. Yeah, they have to connect properly. And that's probably why these get hurt more because you're just, you were on our feet a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And so they just more get- More pressure, more stress. Yeah, yeah. versus you're Worn not, out. unless you're like a pitcher or something, you're not using your arms as much as you would like your legs. And so there's probably more pressure on your knees. Yeah, I, I like think- People have to get right. like knee replacement. You know, when they, they get do. older, knee- My because mom our, had to, yeah. Because our bodies are putting more pressure on our knees. That's pretty amazing. You kind of like, um, oh, we're going to look, we're going to go back, you guys, now to the very important contest that we've got going. <laughs> it's called the My Family, My Flavors Contest. So the question is, do you have a favorite traditional family food? Keith wants you to tell everybody about it. Enter the My Family, My Flavors recipe contest. Three winners will be chosen to cook their dish on TV and win a $100 grocery store gift card. That sounds super cool. My Family, My Flavors is open to students between the ages of 14 and 24. If you're under 18, you'll need your parent or guardian's permission. A little too old for that for me. 
<laughs> Deadline to enter is November 4th, which is this coming up Monday. Yes. And for rules, details, and entry form, go to keet.org. Yeah. And we'll be back on the show on Thursday, Halloween, with snakes oh. and costumes and students from Fortuna and High. And yes. My children in their costumes. And so uh, we'll be excited to see you with or without the power on. We will be here. Yes, so. we absolutely <laughs> will. So we're so happy that you guys have, Thanks for tuning have in. joined us. Yay. Bye.